Hello, hello, hello. This is Captain Panic speaking and welcome back to another Touch the Zender tutorial. So um, I'm a little bit sick, so if my voice cracks, cracks from time to time, <laughs> I am sorry about that. But I still thought that it's a good idea to record this tutorial. So in the background you can see what we are going to do today, um, which is a 100% generative structure, so no image inputs are needed for this. And whenever we reset it, um, we get a new structure that builds up over time. And I made some different color versions and some that have some effects in the post. Um, in this tutorial I will show the basic setup and if you want to have the full amount of different outputs head over to my Patreon and you can download it there. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, welcome on my screen and here you can see my default startup file um, which I use to speed up my workflow if you want to download it it's on my patreon too <laughs> and now enough with the self-promotion and let's get started so um, the first thing I will do is use a square resolution which I can change quick in my startup file and copy my default RAM because we will create some UV map which we are going to displace and then use as an input for our image which we are going to create. So um, we have this RAM and um, we leave it on default for now um, bring in a reorder after this and then out of the RAM we will head into a flip there we go and we want to flip it to the bottom left so we just <laughs> select that flop and select bottom left so it flips one time to the bottom left so um, we will use this one as the second input for the reorder and then we will change something in those inputs. So we want to create a UV map and a UV map only consists out of red and green. So for the output of the blue we choose zero and then we are going to use our second input for the output of the green. So this is a UV map and this basically um, is used in, in, in images, so how the images are placed. But um, I can't really explain this, so I highly recommend to head over to some tutorials of Paketa12. He does a lot of UV displacement and UV stuff, so he also has the best explanation for UV maps. So just check him out, he's great. And now we want to displace this UV map we just created. So first of all, create another and connect this to my background where I hit the blue button to make it visible in the background. So, okay, um, you might already know what we are going to do since I placed a null here. So we will head into a feedback loop. <laughs> so. Um, Bring in a comp after the null, change the operation mode to over, and then out of the null, create a feedback. Then connect it to the comp, make this one the target layer, and also we change the operation order here because we want the feedback 
to be over our null. So just hit this arrow and then it goes to the top. And right now we don't have any operators which are doing anything, so we can't really see anything. So now let's bring in our first operator, which is a displace. And also I will move this up a little bit since we need some space down here. And then I will bring down the displace weight to 0.001 and leave anything else on default. And now let's bring in some layers which we will use for this the displace. So in my latest tutorial um, about the image to watercolor, I also already showed a technique with another reorder and I will bring this in again. So first of all, I need the noise, which I use from my default file. You can find under the noise tab. Um, and then I will copy that noise, change the seed, and bring those two into a reorder. So I want to combine those two noises in a reorder. So I wanna zero the green since we only displays with red and blue. So I don't need any green input. So turn the green to zero and then change the input of the output of the blue to input two and then bring it into the displays. And now you can see our UV map turns into this pattern we created here over time. And another thing I will do is right now I am working with a big resolution. So I will bring that down by easily changing the multiply of my default constant to one. So everything is only on HD resolution. Okay. So now I want to make some changes to this pattern because I want a lot of detail and lots of harmonics. So I will turn up the harmonics of this noise to 10. And also I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I bring the period to 2. And I leave everything else on default. Except for the... Um, pixel format, yes, for the pixel format, I will bring it from 8-bit fixed to 16-bit float. Also on the second noise, I will do the same. And also I will turn up the harmonics here and also the period. And another thing I want to do is animate that noise. So under the translate on the set axis, I will type apps time dot seconds and I want it to be really really slow so I multiply it with 0.01 so it's just really really slightly and I want to the second noise to move exactly like the first noise so I just copy this parameter on the first noise and paste the reference on the second noise. And then I want to be able to dis, uh, to reset my feedback when I hit the key one. So I bring in the keyboard in, connect that on the pulse, chop the reference, and when we hit one, we reset it. And now you can already see we get a lot of detail and some really nice and interesting structures here. And basically, that's it for the first feedback loop. And then I will bring in an option in here for, for later. So right now, it's kind of still and the animation in the end will have a lot of still 
effects, so it's not that great in animation. And I, I have found out that if I bring in another displays, we get a more aerial and fluid feeling. So I just brought in another displays and set the displays weight to 0.001 again. And I will just displace it with itself. So it's kind of windy when we bring this in. So I feel this is this gives more movement to it. But this is absolutely optional. So if you don't want that, just bypass it. I just brought it in and we will see the different difference in the end. So okay. This is it for the first feedback loop. And now let's let's close this feedback loop by adding a null here. Just to keep things in order. And then um, let's bring in a add. So because I want even more detail, I want my overall structure, which uh, this feedback loop will give us. And then bring in some structure into the structure. So we need to bring in this edge. And in this edge, I made some changes to, so I want the strength to be something really small. And I brought it to 0 0.1. And I left everything else on default. So, okay. Now, bring in another null, since we will head into the next feedback loop. Okay, so same procedure. Um, add a composite, change the operation mode to over, then bring in a feedback, connect that, make this one the target layer. And then you can already see we get some tracking of our structure. Um, which is already pretty cool. So, um, yeah. Um, I think um, I have some, some kind of weird edges here, which I don't like, but we will take care of those in the end. The first thing I will do is use this keyboard in one on that feedback too. So we can reset both at the same time. Just like this. Okay, so I think this has something to do with the pixel format. So I will change the pixel format to 32 bit float here. And yeah, that's it. Um, on this comp, when we had on the, the first feedback loop, change the pixel format to 32-bit float, so we get even more details and finer lines without those rough edges you just saw. So, okay. Um, now, we have our tracking of our lines and our structure, but we want even more details, so... Um, I decided to bring in a displace in the second feedback loop too. And also I brought it down to something small, but I, I brought it down to minus 0 0.002 or 001. Let's try the minus 001 first, um, because we will get some nice details by having that on a minus parameter. So after the feedback, I will bring in another comp and change the operation mode to soft light and bring in that null 5, 2. And after that comp, bring in a slope, change the strength to 8 and the sample step to 5 and 5 and then connect it to the displays. And now you can see we get those cells kind of disappearing and 
making this really soft lines even more detailed um, which is kind of cool like I feel and to get a better feeling of what we just created I will bring in a transform in the end bring in a background color and then just reset it and let it run for a while and you get some really cool structure happening so if you don't want that effect just bypass it and you will just get this detailed structure um, now we can have a look at what happens when we turn it on so you saw it and if we want don't want it to kind of shrink the lines down we could make it a positive null null one and then we get those spreads which we have here so this is also kind of cool but a little bit too much for me <laughs> so uh, I just prefer it like that um, so yeah basically that's the technique I wanted to show um, now let's have a look at what happens if we activate that displays we just created there so yeah it gives us a more I don't know I think it feels more organic and more fluid and it has some some nicer feelings for me <laughs> but uh, yeah this is up to you whatever you like more you could make some changes in this um, operation modes here in the second um, input to get some a little bit different effects I feel like okay the maximum doesn't do oh well yeah it does something but something really soft but um, it's always pretty nice to play with different operation modes in feedback loops to get some different effects so um, try that and also if you want to bring in color in the end you could use a look up for this with a ramp for example so if we want to bring in some color here just make some changes to that ramp I don't know maybe some red and some blue could be cool um, yeah but um, if you want to have all the colored versions I showed in the beginning there are there's a more detailed project file with all the different options on my Patreon and you can have a look at them there but also feel free to experiment with this technique it, it has a lot of different options you can manipulate or add to the system which gives you more detail or less detail or whatever you like and yeah, I hope you liked this tutorial. I hope you learned some new stuff. And I hope you're enjoying your results. And hopefully, hear you next time. Stay healthy, stay creative, and stay kind. Bye bye.